Do me a favor, go and follow us on all social media platforms. All right, man, let's get to it. Every canine. <laughs> wong, wong, wong. <laughs> he gonna hit the baritone for us. <laughs> it's every canine. Trina's <laughs> like, I'm the one that can't sing. I'm the one that can't, I can't hold a, a tune. I mean, so let's get right to it. PSI, bite pressure. Mm -hmm. I want. Let's argue. I'm good at arguing. I argue let's argue. A lot. <laughs> I say, I said, Dogo got better bite pressure than a pit bull. I don't believe that. I think a pit bull bites harder. I have to agree with Dennis. Especially like a, a like a real, a, like real original American pit bull terrier. Like, you know, like a. Boyle's dog or Bolio dog, like old game dog, they're gonna bite way harder. I agree. Opinion. I agree. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just arguing, just to argue. But now these, the, I mean, the new, the bullies and stuff, they probably don't even gonna bite that hard. They're under bites, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, structurally, like I, I feel like a pit bull is gonna bite harder than a game dog. Because I would say your teeth have to be aligned right to really get a good yeah. grip and bite. Like you need to. A lot of the old school dogs that had them big underbites, yeah. as hefty as they are now. They had underbites maybe, but not as I'll pronounced. Some dogos that bite real hard, especially ones that are still like used um, to hunt and whatnot in Argentina and stuff. Yes. You know, they probably still bite real hard, but they're probably like a select few. You know. You're not gonna find very many in in the states that are gonna be real nice and, yeah. and bite full and hard. What dog you just said? Oh, we're talking about the doggos. Oh, the doggos. Yeah, so you saying none in the states ain't really gonna be? I don't know. I mean, I won't say none. Yeah, I'm sure there's some that bite hard, but I would assume the ones that are still in South America, you know, hunting and whatnot, they probably bite harder. So, who's biting harder, uh, a corso or a, a German Shepherd? Now look, look. Look, guys, this is we're not talking about what Google says. We're talking about experience. This yeah, is just so experience, Google. not Google. Hands down, German Shepherd. Bigger head. I mean, I've worked some German Shepherds, man, that bite real hard. For sure. Some of the hardest biting dogs that I've ever caught as a decoy are German Shepherds. All right, that's a good, that's a good. So, Pressa or German Shepherd? Oh man, I don't know. That one's a tough one because I've I've worked a couple presses that made me question why I was even a decoy. You know, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, man. For so, sure. This cat that uh that I was introduced to named uh, Toby Weatherspoon. Um, Weatherspoon. He has a presser named Creed. Boy, Creed will make you question why did I ever put a bite suit on in the first place? That dog bites so hard. Have you contemplating life? Decoys ain't really too 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 uh, excited when presses start walking on the field. No, hell no. They're Come big. On. Most of them are mean. They bite really hard. So it's a toss up, you know. Like you got some German shepherds and big headed like check line shepherds. They have to bite real hard, but man, the presses. I'm gonna have to go with a presser. What do you think? probably agree with Pressa. If you've got a confident Pressa out there on the field versus a confident German Shepherd, I'm almost going to guarantee that that Pressa is going to be Even though I I always argue the longer snout, the bigger head, um, like fuller head, mm -hmm. would probably give you a pretty crushing bite. Um, with a Pressa, you've got, and we're talking confident Pressa, yeah. like well-bred, you know, and whatnot. I definitely think that a pressure will probably be in the fighting What do you think? I think a presser for pressure. sure. I think a pressure gonna give you some trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I think the press is gonna do I think the press is gonna do the most damage. It's gonna hurt the worst. Um yeah, they they've got a harder bite in my opinion. Sorry guys for all the background noise. We got lawnmowers in the background. We got dogs crying and screaming in the background, sorry. We apologize. The dog life. This is the dog life. This is real life. <laughs> this is real life. Right? This ain't no, uh, no. as you see, we're not in the studio. We out here on the grounds that we train on. And this is what it is. 
Just Dog Man TV on every K9. Right? Dog Man dog TV. Dog Man TV. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a, wom- a woman into dogs? What do we call that? Yeah, what is that? A dog lady? A dog lady, I guess. Yeah. Dog, dog lady. Dog lady. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Dog yeah, lady. Yeah. Dog gal? Dog nah, gal. we got. No, I don't like neither one of them nah, too much. Neither one of them sound that good. They don't flow. Yeah, yeah. that's hard. I mean. Man, I you feel like the women feel like you leaving them out. You just yeah, say, yeah. I don't want to leave you ladies out. We got to come up with something for you, dog. Yeah, we'll we'll come back. We'll, we'll circle back to that one. It's it's definitely fur momish. Yeah. yeah, she's kind of fur momish. No, no, we're not going there. We're not bringing it up. All right, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we'll save that for another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But 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 that's what we need anyway, though. Yeah. Like the man needs that, that some of that fur mama ish around him, yeah. Because we lack it, we for lack sure. it, sure. you know. So it's to me, it's a balance. I appreciate it, you know. I don't know. I've met some dudes that are fur moms. Nah, we don't need them around. We don't need them around. <laughs> nah, we don't need them around. <laughs> nah, they don't do anything good. <laughs> no, Dennis and I have had a conversation about this before, but you know, some dogs need that like playful kind of like female energy yeah. i feel um and i feel like females have a, an easier time kind of tapping into that mm-hmm. versus you know that higher pitch like yeah great job versus a man who's like sit good yes like yeah. a lot of men yeah. struggle with kind of tapping into that more feminine type of energy that a dog reads off of um so i do feel like you know i i, I don't even really consider it fur mom energy i i just feel like me neither it's not that feminine energy that they're able to tap into like yeah you know being excited and whatnot um no i see i don't see that as like a fur mom if that no, if a dude is doing that to me he's a good trainer mm-hmm. like he's i think you got to be able to do that yeah. for the student you know yep. but what i mean is from the from that fur mama side i'm talking about that that care mm-hmm. for the yeah. animals yep. like that care because dudes is is men are a little different you know what I mean? Sometimes you need somebody that's just a little bit more nurturing. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You know, so that's what I mean by that. I don't mean, you know. Yeah, some dogs need that, like, extra step, that nurturing, motherly kind of thing to make them come out of their shells and stuff. Mm-hmm. Where a guy like me might come in and look at the dog and tell him to sit, and the dog's scared to death because... <laughs> You know, I'm big and scary. Yeah. And then Serena comes in and she's like, oh, hey, sick puppy. And the dog's like, hey, yeah. He need that. Because yeah, he he, at the house, that's what he's getting. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He getting that yeah. kind of energy at the house. Yeah. Trainers are stale. Yeah. So, especially men trainers, men you know, trainers, they're yeah. stale. They don't have that energy. Not That's not normal yeah. energy from a man, you know. So, usually that female trainer will match that energy that's coming from the house yeah. and to make the dog more comfortable quick. Yeah. You know what's crazy, too, because, like, as trainers, men, you know, male trainers, any trainer, really, we're telling our client, you have to up the energy. You know, you have to show the dog enthusiasm. You have to do this and that. We're not doing it, though. Like, we're like, you got to get out there and get peppy and like bounce around with your dog. But we ain't bouncing. We're like, sit. Yes, good boy. And they're like, and then when they do it, we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to show your dog some enthusiasm. I mean, I didn't do it, but you need to. Yeah, you need to definitely do it. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't say it right. <laughs> you definitely need to show your dog more energy. Do what I say, not what I do. Not what I do. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I be. I feel like I be balanced. Like I don't know if it's yeah, kind of. You know, yeah. I get him that energy too, though. I get him that peppy yeah. energy. I get him that high pitched Mickey Mouse voice. I do it when ain't nobody around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look, you know. Sometimes I might get caught. You know, Serena might pop in the building and be like, "What are you doing?" Like, and now I'm embarrassed, and I get all up in my shell. And you ain't gonna really record yourself. No, I, no, man, no, <laughs> no, that's no. Not, so, no. Now Serena just show everybody behind my back. She'll be sending them to my wife. Look what Dennis did. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he ain't hard like you he thought he was. He ain't as hard as you thought. He, he sounds like, like Mickey Mouse over here training. The- <laughs> Should have saw him with that poodle. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Hey, we got a poodle right now. I'm going to go over there and be all hyper with it. <laughs> so, so look. All right, for the people out there looking for a good family dog. A good family dog. They want a medium-sized dog. Shedding is not a thing for them. They want a dog that they can take out to parks, like Herman Park or different mm-hmm. parks. 
a dog they can take to bars and and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. It'll be good with their kids. What breed? Man, I'm about to get dragged for this one. You guys, don't jump me on this, but I'm I'm gonna go with a, probably a golden doodle or some kind of some kind of doodle. You know, my first thought was lab, bro, but man, this like, is impossible, bro. The last the last time I asked somebody that, they said the same thing. I mean, they said the same thing. I've seen a lot of y'all better take notes. Y'all gonna... better take notes. The last trainer I asked that, I might put that clip in there. Said the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of them that are really, you know, balanced. They're kind of goofy, kind of, kind of dumb for a little while. They play a lot, you know. But overall, man, I ain't never seen one that, that's a bite case. I've never gotten one in that's a bite case. Um, we've gotten a couple reactions. I just got ones. one for real. I just got one that that will uh, beat the children. Oh, that's bad. A golden doodle. But that's that's the exception. It's I'm the exception. This, this we exception. had one recently that was like. Uh, Kind of reactive a little bit, but I feel like uh, the dog Moose. It was kind of reactive a little bit, but oh, yeah. it was really nothing, man. It was just a little exposure, and he was cool. So I'm a, I'm sticking to my guns. I think Doodles. Go doodle, Labradoodle, Golden Doodle, both of them like entertainment. Yeah, Labradoodle, Golden Doodle, Bernadoodle. Mm -mm. Bernadoodle? No. no? What'd you no say? No Bernadoodle? No. What do you think? I actually would probably argue that a Bernadoodle would probably be the best out of all of them. Why? Because, okay, so take a Bernese Mountain Dog. Mm -hmm. They are fluffy, playful, like, goofy dogs, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, like, a Golden Retriever is that too, but I feel like if you statistically look at the doodles, I think I see more bite cases in Golden golden Doodles than I, I do Bernadoodles. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I mean, Golden Retrievers, golden retrievers account for more bites than... Most any dog. That makes sense, though. So, yeah, right. that makes sense. Yeah, so I, I, and we've trained both Golden and Bernadoodles. Yeah. And I 100% feel like my Bernadoodles were more confident, more social, yeah. Yeah. more playful than our Golden Doodles. I could get behind that. Doodles, doodles for the win. Doodles for I the mean, win. I mean, it's st still. I mean, I probably I'm just saying. Get one, but, you know. I think, <laughs> I, can, I can agree, though, like, um. I, I don't know. I never had a Bernadoodle. I don't have a whole lot of experience with them, mm -hmm. so I can't really judge in between like you just did. Yeah. Um, but I just say for the for the doodles in general, I think untrained they're terrible. Untrained they're terrible. Absolutely. They they they're, they're ridiculous. Awful. But when you train them, their training looks some like some of the best training. Yeah, yeah. Because they're smart, man. Yeah. They pick up quick and they like happy. They're happy to make you happy. So I would so. I would say if I'm selecting out of a litter of doodles, you could say burning doodle, lab doodle, golden doodle, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying for that family that wants to go everywhere with that dog and still pick the medium drive energy yeah. one, yes. I'm going in the middle. Yeah, I'd go in the middle too. I think a high drive doodle could be a catastrophe until that dog is trained. Yeah. He'd be, it's going to be like a, a two-year-old on a sugar rush. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, like those higher drive doodles will probably have the worst qualities of both breeds. Right, yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. so, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like middle of the road doodle would be the best like family dog probably. Yeah, I would agree with that. What's the, okay, so we know the doodles, you got to go get them groomed. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? The grooming is probably going to be 105 110 going to be. You're going to be at least in 100 yeah. these days right now to go get the dogs groomed. You're doing that every, what, six weeks, eight weeks? I don't know if it's that often or not, but I know you definitely got to go get them groomed. Probably about four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Yeah. So you're spending every month just $100 just on the grooming. Mm -hmm. All right. They're intelligent dogs. They got a lot of energy. What's some of the drawbacks? They have a lot of energy. A lot of energy. energy. You're going to have to work yeah. them a lot, expel a lot of the energy through mental stimulation as well as physical stimulation. So, you know, figure in another what like 30 minutes to an hour of training or exercise per day yeah you know so that could be a drawback to some families and the cost would they, they like twenty five hundred dollars right what yeah about I, yeah i'd assume so i mean most most yeah. well-bred pups now are probably around that so 25 twenty five hundred dollar investment and then training i mean depends on where they go you're talking twenty five hundred to, to six thousand dollars for training you know depending on where they're going and what programs you're doing so you know, you got that investment too. Yeah, you need to think about that all that before time. Hey, be quiet. 
But then again, I mean, it don't matter what breed they get. They should invest in training. So, you know, that's going to be a betterment in the life of the dog and, and and the people enjoyable time with your dog for the family. You know, because yeah. it, it ain't no fun walking a dog down the street that's dragging you and. No, that ain't fun. Yeah, the average person don't even walk their dog no more after that. After it drags them a few times, yep. they like, look, you too strong. Yep. I ain't doing that. People will give up real fast. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you buying a you buying a uh, a doodle in uh, 2024 in the time of scams, how we buying this dog? How we how we gonna bypass all these scams? Man, because but it's tough out here. It's, it's more it, scams than dogs yeah. out here. And you know, and what makes it tough about uh, buying a doodle? It, as well as because um, you don't really know uh, what the uh, you don't you, you can't really trace the genetics because essentially they're they're mutts they're mixed breed dogs right so you can't really chase trace the genetics like you can say if you're going to buy you know a registered German Shepherd you can see his genetics all the way back to whatever country he comes from Corso is the same way you know because uh, I know they're a real popular breed yeah. you oh, can trace their genetics back. It, it, <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. Now, I, what I find interesting in the doodles is we we cannot trace their genetics, right? Mm -hmm. And I would kind of make an argue for consistency. Like, how are we going to know these dogs going to be consistent and all this? But it seemed like so many of them are alike. They that seem is, very consistent. Yeah. I don't know how this is happening, but for the most part, most of them is the same dog. That is true. But, you know, I, I always hear people say that a mixed breed dog is the best dog you can get. It's genetically superior. You know, it's healthier. There's less issues, less cancers, less, you know, whatever. So maybe there's something to that, you know. Yeah. Um, multiple genes and of different species, not species, but like breeds yeah. coming together to create one. Maybe, the, you know, maybe they're onto something. Some kind of way, yeah, because yeah. they're making that consistency and, like you just said, the health, the healthier yeah. dog. I mean, for sure, you see better you see better health out of a dog that's bred out of six dogs than a, you know, a genetically pure mm -hmm. German Shepherd. It's Look at Coop over there, man. He got a hundred different type of pit bulls in him. Yeah. And bullies and everything it's else in him, man. Healthy. This dude's an OG. <laughs> <laughs> healthy as hell. <laughs> that's, that's how it is. Yeah. So, but avoiding these scams. Avoiding the scams. How do you avoid the scams? Like, well, for one, don't be buying your burner doodle on Craigslist. No. Go to the breeder. Meet the breeder. Meet the dogs. You know, meet sure. the parents. For Look sure. for health issues there. You know, I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm not one to really just randomly see an ad for a dog on, you know, some website, Good Dog or whatever, and be like, hey, I'm going to buy that dog from Seattle and trust that this person is legit. That's because you've been in the dog world for a while. Yeah. You know how this works. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, even on Facebook, right, somebody may have a Facebook. They got videos of the dog. They got beautiful pictures of the dog. Yeah. And they can make you think this is a real person. Right. It's a real breeder. And before you know it, you send a thousand dollars for a deposit and um, gone. It's a wrap. It's gone. Yeah. This is this is on Instagram. This is on Facebook. Yeah. So people are really making these things look like real pages. So what do you do to avoid that? What do you think? Um, for sure, look for a contract. That would be my number one. Um, when vetting for any any dog, um, there should be some sort of contract, even if if, if it's for a pet. And I don't know, I don't know how y'all feel about that, but. For me, like, I feel like a contract can still be in a scammy type situation. But what I'm saying is, so usually a contract, you'll, you'll get that when you meet the person. Yeah, they're yeah. not going to Because a lot of people are contract. not getting to even meet the person. Mm -hmm. They're not getting that far down the road before they're sending that deposit in. Or they might get a contract and they're filling out the contract and sending the deposit back. Yeah. So people are giving contracts now, but scammers are doing, you know, they're doing the same thing. So Yes, I mean, the scammer might just print up a contract just to make you feel a little more secure when really they're just trying to make you comfortable so they can steal more money. Yeah. Because you could say, well, look, go join some Facebook and Instagram groups, dog people. Yeah. And it's scammers all on there. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? I mean, so yeah. Re references from people you know yeah. look and see yeah. if these people have references do they have a website i mean not every breeder has a website but you know do they do they have a facebook page a group for their clients you know people that have purchased dogs from them 
Just try and see, you know, a little bit of background on what the breeder's doing. Yeah, because a lot of times they have stock photos. If you go to a to a certain site and they have all these stock photos, all these immaculate photos, you're probably in the middle of a scam. Yeah. And then when they communicate back with you, if it sounds like they don't they don't talk like an American, it's a scam. Ninety nine percent of the time, if they don't know how to type, in, you, yeah. you get what I'm saying. If they sound like they're from out of the country, mm -hmm. leave it alone. Leave it alone. Them of the most scams I see is from people that's out of the country, and you know when you start holding dialogue with them that they speak differently. Let that be a red flag. Yeah. And no, yeah. no, nah, this ain't this ain't it. Hey, there's scammers here that are as American as it gets too, and they'll still send you. <laughs> They send you the wrong dog. dog. They send you a whole know? other color dog. I see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. They send you the wrong <laughs> color dog. You get a video of a white dog, you get you get a brindle dog. They do. Or I, I actually had a, a situation where a uh, very fine gentleman sent me a video, um, multiple working videos of this female. She looked great, man. She was on fire in the videos, biting and doing everything she could. And I uh, paid him $2,500. He shipped the dog to me. I went up to Dallas, picked her up, came home. Boy, that dog was scared of everything in the world. She mm. won't bite nothing. Uh, was terrified. Terrified. I shook a dog food bag. She hit the ground like a pancake and peed everywhere. So Crazy. I gave her to a friend of my wife's um, as a pet. She spayed her. And to this day, the dog is, you know, three, four years old, something like that now. And still absolutely terrified of everything. A leaf coat could blow by her and she's terrified. So I got scammed. I was just know? talking about this the other day. Um, I posted a video talking about genetics. You know, you get what you you get what you see. Yeah. Basically, don't expect the dog to grow and be something different than what you're currently seeing. Yeah. If the dog is a whiny dog, it's probably going to be a whiny vocal dog for all of his life. If it's scared of a bag or a shirt you know you fold it, like ruffle a shirt or something at him and it jumps out of his skin the dog's probably going to be like that training Absolutely. can help that but you can never change the foundation of of that dog and i had people arguing with me saying no well i got dogs that have been changed and like come on come now on. you can't change genetics you know it's like a dog that is genetically aggressive he has natural aggression and he wants to fight you we ain't changing that you can't change that He's not a dog park dog. No, he's not a dog park dog. I mean, <laughs> no, I, I've had clients that, you know, I have I have a client who went over um, years ago. I trained his dog. He went and bought a, a pit bull from Floyd Boudreau. A oh, yeah, yeah. If you know who Floyd, Floyd, uh, Floyd Boudreau is, you know what's up with the dogs. Yeah. So he brought the dog to me at six months old to do training. We trained the dog, and I told him, look, you know, you're telling me that he lives with your girlfriend's dog. There's going to come a day when this dog's going to come on. Mm -hmm. Things are going to go bad. Oh, no, they're going to ra be raised together. They're going to be okay. We'll just train. Well, he trained. Man, that dog's training was great, right? Well, 16 months old, he calls me and says, hey, man, Floki uh, ripped Gator's guts open on my living room floor. Well, genetics, genetics. man. Genetics means something. Genetics. You cannot train over genetics. No matter what you try to do, no matter what kind of experiment you try to put this dog through, them genetic, them genetics going to pop up. Yeah. They're going to show up in, in maturity. At some point, it's coming through. It's coming. Just just count on it. Yeah. Just count on it. So, you know, yeah, especially dogs that have been been bred as tight as some of those dogs, yeah. Yeah. they're going to show at some They're bred point. for a specific if trait? They, if they don't, it's a flaw. Exactly. It's a flaw if exactly. they don't show. So, yeah, man, you can't train over genetics. So people, take your time when you buying a dog. I know we talking about dog scams and all that. Yeah. Take your time when you buying a dog. There's no rush. Every puppy is cute, so don't give in to that. And just learn how to decipher what you're seeing. Yeah. You know, I think it's better if you even have a trainer that you're using. Call them, pay them, let them go yeah, with you. Yeah, let them go with you and try to help. I, I get that a lot with clients like looking for a protection dog. Okay, man, I'm more than happy to help you source the right pup. If you find a litter that you really want, I'll go with you, and we'll, we'll test them out. But you know what, man? People don't. They, they want to do it themselves, and then they end up in a situation like, oh, man, this dog won't work. They always this. rush it. Yeah, they're rushing it. You get mm -hmm. a dog that don't work or a dog that's trying to hammer your kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. No in between. And it's like if you just slow down right now, you can enjoy that dog in the future. You're going to know what you're going to have. But if you rush it now, you're going to have a dog that you don't like 
its ways, its characteristics, but now you got the dog and you love the dog. Absolutely. So don't put yourself in that bind because you're going to fall in love with the dog and then you ain't going to want to get rid of the dog. Yeah. Take your time. Choose the right dog. I went through that myself. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. impulsively at 18 bought a Malinois and, and it, he didn't, he did not come from a good person. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I consulted him actually right before I brought him home. And he, he was a decent pup. Like he, he was social, um, fairly confident. Still, he needed, he needed a lot of work, mm -hmm. um, but he was a brand new puppy. So I came to him and I was like, hey, uh, here's a pedigree. Um, does it look good? And he's like, we'll work him. It's a <laughs> we'll Mexican dog right there. It was a Mexican. It was a Mexican dog. It was a Mexican Malinois. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he did what Mexican Malinois do. Run. Yeah. Run. Yeah. He, we worked him for weeks after weeks after weeks and I came to him and I was like look you know don't sugarcoat shit for me like I I need you to be honest with me I need to know what I have and unfortunately a lot of people aren't going to be like that um but I was and mm -hmm. I came to him and we got to probably about what like six months old yeah we we uh I forgot what you know he was older than that but I remember we worked him for a long for quite a while and then I remember you saying I, I'm just going to wash him we're going to be done and yep. I said no. Let's let's give him another. Let's give him six solid months of work consistently and, and see where he is. That, let's not wash him yet. Let's see what happens. You know, trying to you know give the dog the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. you know? And usually, which is really out of my character because I ain't trying to. I don't like messing with dogs. If you, I work you a few times and I see that you don't have what it takes. I don't want to waste my time. Wash them. Get move on. Um, I'm not one of those like let's build better dogs. Like let's no man. If the dog is weak, the dog is weak. There's I'm done. But you know, I liked Serena. I liked her passion, the conviction. And I said, let's work with the dog. Let's give him six months and see what he does. So we did. We gave him six months. That's a long time. It is. It's a long time. It's and a we long time. Consistently, a minimum of twice a week we worked that. Yeah. That's a long time. And it's hard to tell somebody that their dog is a wash. It's, oh, it's, no, it ain't hard for me. Well, <laughs> it's, hard for, it's hard for me. It, it depends on the person. If I can see that person is really like tied up and wrapped up with their dog, it's hard for me to be like, man, that dog ain't the one. You're going to have to trash that dog. You I've know? been told that I'm cold hearted see, and emotionless. Know. Mostly, you know, my yeah. wife told me that. <laughs> 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 I hope she don't watch this. But no, you know, it, I guess to me, um, I've never had anybody sugarcoat anything about my dogs. So, you know, I grew up with some old school dudes, you know, yeah, and yeah. they told me, that dog's a piece of shit or whatever, you know, and I'm. Dang, that sucks. But I try to be as honest as I can, you know. And I was honest with her about what I saw, but I said, let's give him some time and see. Yeah. And um, we saw what we saw, and it didn't change. No, he, he did not work out. See, when you buy a dog for a purpose, like, man, it's like you wrapped up in the dog, but not that much. It got to right. fulfill that purpose. Absolutely. And then you'll be ready to see when you say, when you hear us say, wash the dog, that means get rid of the dog. That's just a dog trainer term get rid of the dog the dog couldn't make the cut yeah and it's like your average pet home it's like they got a different kind of affection than trainers got you buy a dog for a purpose you want it to do something if it can't do that then you got to really move on to the dog that can serve that purpose right. and you can't just keep harboring all, the, all these animals having all these dogs you ain't gonna pay the dog no attention anyway right. yeah, yeah you end up you end up with 15 dogs in your house and not one of them will do the job yep you know, yep. there, there's a local lady that I've talked to several times that um, she's got about eight Malinois and a German Shepherd that uh, when a, a, another local trainer gets his uh, washed dog, he sells them to her because, you know, she don't know any better. That's so she crazy. buys them dogs and she, she called me all the time. What? I need a dog that'll work. I've bought eight of these Malinois and none of them work. Well, be more selective. Yeah. You know, be more selective. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up this episode right here. Look, make sure to share this on all social media platforms. Hey, this Mark with every K9, Dennis and Serena, over and out. <laughs>